Hello audience. In this video, we're finally finishing up all the outside panels and I start to work on the internal structure a little. So let's get started. Making the rear door panel is pretty much identical with the front, only difference being this curved part here, which I had to form with a small pair of pliers, but it seems to be working that way. And here's what I have so far. Now the good news is the beads are coming out with pretty good definition to them. Now with the front door and the right rear, I had to hammer it out a little more, but this is looking pretty good. So probably won't even need to file it. Bad news is, somehow ended up with a high spot right here. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but it's there. Probably going to need to heat shrink that. Also, the back of it doesn't really want to hold its shape because there's a cut right there where we transition the bead. However, I think when I make the wood frame, it'll just force it in place, and if this gets distorted at all, I can just hammer it down because that's what happened on the other side, and that worked. And that pretty much fixed it. So it's usable now. Also, I've attached the wood frame to it, and the back of it, it just conformed into place really well and sitting properly, so that's good. Now, here's the wood frame, which, like everything else, not quite finished yet. Just good enough to start aligning everything. Now where the hinge goes, I routed this out about an eighth inch so the hinge sinks in there like it did originally. And it's missing the tack strip that's supposed to go across the center and there's supposed to be a block here to hold the door latch. But again, not necessary for aligning it, so I just left it out for now. So now I'm going to throw it on the car and align it. And now I've installed the door and working on aligning it now, which is pretty much the same thing I did with the front door. Now these door posts for the rear doors, they're held in place by the seat frame, which I don't have. So, I got these temporary braces holding it in. And then, once I get it set exactly where the doors line up, then I'm going to leave it that way and build the seat frame around it. Alright, I'm done aligning the doors for now. So, next I'm going to install the rear cross member on the body. So first I'm going to trim down these sills to the proper size and then attach this. So the next thing i got to do is put the back of the body back on and figure out where the notches should go for the door hinges. got the back of the body on again, holding it on with clamps. Now, without really adjusting anything, the door gaps are pretty good. 
on this side anyway, it's pretty even all the way down here. Really nice. So that came out good. On the right side, up here, it's pretty good. But down here, the gap is kind of big. Now, the bead lines up, so I shouldn't relocate it. So, if I want to do anything about this, I might cut this off and make a new piece for it. Or, I might just leave it, because the rear fender covers all this anyway. So, we'll see. But anyway, it's good enough, which means we can move on to the next step. Now, as I've mentioned in previous videos, the 1913 bodies, they were a bit underbuilt in a few areas, which led to problems. The biggest problem they had was right here. The sills, right where the rear doors are. Because the sills were underbuilt to begin with, and they made them even narrower where the doors are to clear the doors. Now, the thing you have to keep in mind is the back seat backrest is further back than the rear cross member of the frame, which means when the backseat passengers sit in it, they're putting strain on the body to try to force the back of the body to go off the back of the frame. And the only thing preventing it from doing so is the sills, and the nearest body bolt is all the way up here in the center. So it puts a lot of strain on these. So what would happen is the sills would just start splitting apart right here and right here, and the back of the body would just start tilting back. And this happened very early on in the year, actually. And what Ford did was they recalled the touring cars, and they made a big steel brace to go between here to remedy the problem. It was a U-shape, it bolted on both posts and the sills, and just had a bunch of carriage bolts that ran through it. It's not very pretty, but it had to be something that could be added on complete cars in the field. Now, just the same, they completely changed the sill design in 1914, undoubtedly because of this problem. Now, obviously, I'm going to have the same problem with this thing, so I've spent several months thinking about what I'm going to do about it. My original plan was to just copy the original braces that were added when they were recalled, but I've been reading the forums a lot, and a lot of these guys, they're looking for some clever way to eliminate them. So I started thinking about that, started thinking about ways of putting steel inside the sills where you couldn't see it, and what I decided on is I'm going to take a piece of L-shaped steel, about an eighth inch thick, and bolt it to the side of the sills and run it from the center body mount all the way to the back, and just keep running bolts on it all along here. And That should hold the sills pretty rigid. So I'm going to make a set of those and see how it looks. This is what I'm going to make them out of. It's a piece of two and a half inch by two and a half inch square tube, and I'm going to cut it in half lengthwise. Now this is not the best way to do it. It's going to be a lot of extra work, but this particular piece of metal was really cheap, so I'm going to do it this way anyway. Now one thing I didn't realize was the heat from plasma cutting it warped both halves, so now I'm trying to straighten them back out. Now another thing I'm going to do is weld a plate on back here so I can run bolts through it to hold the rear cross member on. Now the 1922 and newer, I think, bodies had a bracket like this that held it on, which is where I got the idea from.
and there they are. Now, obviously, as you can see, there's only five really small screws holding it on. Obviously, that's not enough. I still need to drill a bunch more holes in it and run bolts all the way through it. But I haven't done that because, one, I'm not entirely sure where I want to drill them or how many bolts I want to put in it. And two, I can't install them anyway because the sills are not finished. But this will keep progress moving anyway. Now these edges, I trimmed them down a little because I wanted to remove some weight. But it didn't take too much out of them because even this adds strength to the body. Now the additional frame mount that the 13 bodies got later on, I'm not going to add that because I think it'll be good enough as is. So it looks pretty good, but we'll just have to wait till final assembly to see just how strong it really is. Well, that's it for now. Now I've made a few other parts also, but they're not finished yet, so they're just going to have to wait for another video. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.